So what exactly is Kundalini? Before I get to this topic, let me just share a brief energy of Kundalini and as it is spoken of in the Vedas and all my learnings etc. And I'll share, you, share with you some, some resources and everything that I came across, good ones, very reliable ones, later in the video. <clears throat> so what is Kundalini? Kundalini as described by the Vedic literature is basically the purest form of life force which resides in all of us. We call it the soul but actually soul is not such an encapsulation as far as Kundalini is concerned. So Kundalini is that life energy in all of us which as babies when we are developing in our mother's womb it enters from the top of our head the soul energy if you want to call it that that which animates us the anima of the life force is kundalini so it enters the baby even in the mother's womb from the top goes through all through the brain through the spine and as it goes on creating the entire body it goes on down different points or energy centers called the chakras in the spine and it builds the body it builds the different organs the bones the tissues the cellular structure everything and it goes finally after it has built the whole body it goes curls itself up like a snake and rests at the bottom of the spine, the tailbone, okay, the coccyx bone, coccyx, I don't know how it's pronounced, but anyway. So there it resides and throughout our life, while we are living in the external world, awake world, the Kundalini lies there coiled up. While it does all the functions of the body through the spine, through the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system in our spine, if you know a little bit of biology, the spine consists of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems and also the central nervous system, which the spinal cord ties into the brain, the cortex, the frontal cortex, the neocortex, the limbic system the medulla oblongata, the back side of the brain, all of these functional parts that we know as modern science now. <clears throat> so the Kundalini energy or the life force within us even acts through these nervous systems. Why were these nervous systems called as central? Because that's where our chi or our prana or the life energy flows. Now even the ancient Chinese system of medicine and acupuncture and so on, they used to have the chi energy, right? And they used to call these the meridians of the body. Now the meridians are a little different from the way the kundalini is explained, so don't confuse the two. Meridians is not the kundalini, although kundalini acts via the meridians also, there is truth in everything. So the spinal cord and how the nervous currents flow through the body because nerves, the spine and the brain regulate everything, the hormonal functions, the enzymes, the flow of the three vata, pitta and kapha doshas in the body which I had discussed in the healer's astrology playlist if you want to look it up. What is the vata, pitta and kapha? What does Ayurveda deal with and why? Now the Kundalini is beyond that. It's like the master regulator. It's the life force energy within you. Okay, That's what essentially Kundalini is. It's the life energy in its purest form, in its most raw form, you can say. It does not have any impressions from the past lives. For each one of us, the life energy called Kundalini is the same. That's where we are all the same. That's where all life is the same. All sentient beings carry this energy of Kundalini in various forms, in various depictions. Now the human being, where the human being becomes special in so far as Kundalini is concerned, is where the person tunes their past life experiences on earth. Remember your past life experiences or your karma on earth is very very tiny portion of this whole game. Very tiny. Remember that. Your soul has been to lots of other systems, lots of other galaxies, lots of other lifetimes. It's endless. 
you are an eternal being so there is no end to how many lifetimes you have had just not on this earth but everywhere else other systems as well so the kundalini carries all of this repository as well and when it lands in you as you as your soul as your kundalini it tunes your body your body systems your ancestral lineage your cellular structure your dna inheritance from your parents their characteristics their facial features their you know the looks whatever looks we have like i'm an indian so it's, you know the race and the features and everything show up from the parents father side mother side and so on it goes up the ancestral scale that it brings and it works through that memory system all genetic inheritance is a memory system right obviously so that memory system is what the kundalini uses to work through your body through your life through your astrological chart through everything else these are all tools that the vedic literature provides us to understand ourselves better okay so briefly that's my take on kundalini i will leave a couple of books in the video uh, which you can use as resources to study it more what is kundalini there is a book called the serpent power by written by sir john woodruff it's the most comprehensive most amazing book i have ever read on kundalini i've read some books on kundalini way back 15 20 years ago but this is the best one so far nothing surpasses it i mean this gentleman has literally dissected each and everything opened all the books there are and studied and compiled together like a dictionary of kundalini you you would want to study this it's available on kindle amazon everywhere else right now we get to this part called the kundalini of the planet this is different kundalini than the kundalini of the individual humans and all sentient life on earth this is very different don't confuse the two the kundalini of the planet does not work like the human being the way it works in human beings you might say kundalini works in different sentient beings in different form in different format in different ways which is very specific to each and every species obviously human being can't start flapping around like a pigeon right obviously it has to work through the dna through the cellular structure through the karma of each and every sentient being and it has to work through the memory of that a plant only builds itself a bird only builds it reproduces itself a human being reproduces itself, so on and so forth right so kundalini energy is raw life force it is not specific to a genetic structure it is just all life or in vedic terms it is also called the mother goddess the shakti the that which is the mother of this entire creation that which has built this entire creation through her own womb you can call it the divine mother of the creations itself in sanskrit they have a word called anant koti brahmanda means endless crores or millions and trillions and billions upon universes which are built through this divine mother energy of kundalini so it's don't consider it individual that which is your kundalini and my kundalini and all the seven billion including the plants the birds the animals the everything is the same is the universal creative energy is kundalini now kundalini when it comes to the planet is what i'm talking about here as the life force as what we call mother nature as what we call earth that which lives and breathes that which has its own life life force earth is a sentient being all by herself the earth is a being we are living and breathing and sleeping and eating and drinking and we live our entire life upon a living being called the earth called mother nature called gaia and called all these ancient lore they have given different terminologies but it's the same entity it's the same being we are living upon call that earth over there now this life force of this earth called kundalini works differently this kundalini she i use will use the female tense because it's the mother energy it's the divine feminine energy okay so 
it only makes sense that I, I use the female pronoun there. So this mother energy, she builds the earth systems, she changes the weather patterns, she takes out certain life forms, take, brings in certain life forms from time to time, from millions of years or however long this has been going on, right? Some species come and go, new species come and go, of plants and animals, it has been happening throughout evolution. DNA and mutation is constant on this planet for millennium, for hundreds and thousands, maybe even millions of years, right? <clears throat> that's what's been going on and that's the energy we are talking about. The conscious energy, the life energy of the planet, which regulates all these beings, which regulates all the motions and the instinct of all mammals, animals, right down to the tiniest bacteria and virus. It regulates everything. It knows what's going on inside of itself. Now, if you're an earth sensitive person like I am, you would know when you're walking upon the planet, there is an energy on the planet. You know there are certain things that have happened on a land or you feel the density of the land itself, the physical land, the soil, the rocks, the dirt of the earth. That's what I'm talking about. Not the land as in humans upon it or the plants and animals upon it or the weather systems there. Just the land, pure raw land. It's a being. It's an evolving being. It's an ever evolving being. Now we come to 2022 onwards. What is happening in 2022 onwards? Well, everything has been shifting in this shift. Now, the previous three videos I have been talking about the shift. Now we talk about the shift of Kundalini of the planet itself. The life energy of the planet was residing physically or centered around the head of the snake. Kundalini is symbolized by a snake. That's what the Kadusha symbol we use in medical sciences, the twirling snakes. It stands for healing. It stands for DNA structure. It stands for a lot of things. That's the symbol over there, right? Caduceus snakes and that's the seven chakras but never mind let's get back to kundalini of the planet this kundalini of the planet the head of the dragon or the snake chinese call it dragon indians call it snake was residing near kailash mount kailash which is in india tibet now china wherever the border in the Himalayan range. That's where the Kundalini of the planet was like forever. I don't even know the timelines. There's nothing properly written about this there. How long has it been there? It has been there in India and Tibet forever in that region of the Himalayan belt for millenniums together. And now as a part of this shift, and there are a couple of resources which I will share with you who will talk about this. It is shifting, it is still shifting by the way, it started 1987 somewhere and it goes till 2040-50 onwards. So this energy from the northern hemisphere, that's the equatorial line, white line I have drawn there, it shifts from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere and it is going to go and sit itself like a snake in Peru. Peru and Chile, sorry, my mind. So Peru and Chile is where it will center. Peru is the northern part of this uh, continent, Latin America, and Chile is the southern part. So Peru and Chile, it will sit there. When this energy has fully shifted and grounded of the planet, the consciousness energy of the planet, okay, everything changes from then on. Everything changes. And what I mean by that? When in the Northern Hemisphere, which is the North masculine energy, it was all about male awakenings. The soul embodied, which is in male format, was shifting. That's how there used to be many gurus at the time, which are all male. Have you noticed that? All the gurus which come have come from India and they all have been predominantly male figures. Now, when it shifts to Chile and Peru, it will become all female shamans. It will become female awakeners, preachers, teachers, counselors, healers of all kinds, Reiki practitioners. Have you noticed a trend? If you are following this and if you are a spiritually inclined person, you know that everybody is talking about Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine is the Kundalini. Divine Feminine is the Mother Goddess, the Mother of the Creation. 
and they are awakening first in this shift all the women on the planet the souls who have come into female bodies are awakening first more so than the men now why one reason is this i believe so i believe this very very strongly this is the reason why this is happening why more women are awakening in this energy is because of this shift okay i kept some notes over there you can go through that so this is what is happening as a result of this many women will awaken even the ones who are listening to this even the ones who are coming in the future especially children who have been born in the shift since 1987 they'll go through this even more powerfully now what does this create what does this awakening of the planet in kundalini shifting to the southern hemisphere mean well first of all wherever kundalini centers in whichever continent it will tend to make that continent spiritual like it did to india my guess is as it moves away from india to the other side of the globe because this is almost the antipode antipode means the diagonally opposite portion india right opposite to the india on the side of the globe is pacific ocean that spot where i have put that arrow exactly that spot that's the opposite of india okay it's moved right across the globe now or moving still when this happens what's going to end up happening is this continent will shift latin america will shift latin america will become the spiritual center of awakening in the world just like india was all these millenniums the role has shifted folks it's no longer india it will go to other part of the world after this shift it's finished second it will bring about more of feminine energy to the entire planet what is the feminine energy i'm talking about here it's not in terms of goddess kind of energy although there is definitely the part of that but it is the mother energy part of it it is the one who takes care of it compassion is going to rule everything people who are not compassionate the planet will reject them let it be leaders let it be anybody anything political systems governance it will affect all areas of human life and everything on the planet as well it is the compassion energy of the mother okay that's what this energy is about that's what it will create in latin america and mind you latin america is sitting next to united states of america whichever continent sits next to wherever or nearby or in proximity to wherever kundalini of the planet moves they are going to end up becoming spiritual and spiritualism and materialism are kind of antagonistic in that respect the person becomes more spiritual he'll automatically he or she will become less materialistic this is a normal process it's nothing to do with rejection of one thing or the other there's no wound here it's just a normal process the more higher you go in frequency the letter lesser attachment you have towards material body material realms desires gaining money or sex or any one of these things the lesser attachment is a normal process you are detaching from the body and going towards spirit that's what will happen here and that will make america more and more more and more more and more spiritualistic as we see coming through decades we will see this this is part of the shift that's the profundity of this and since it's moving away from the east and going towards the west opposite effect will happen in my opinion in the east this will become the new america kind of centers very materialistic all about money 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 they'll get materialistic progress once again all the time it was centered here that's why india is all about spirituality not much of materialism here and now it is shifting into latin america so it will change these continents north america and south america it will change all these spots this will become the spiritual centers of learning and driven by women driven by those who are wise in female bodies female shamans female healers female leaders of all kinds we will see that coming this is part of the shift and that's what i think is happening in the kundalini energy of the planet now i'll share with you some resources i will stick this as a link in the youtube video check it out cryon channel talks about it in the when he channeled in santiago and when he channeled in some other place in the it's recorded in the sedona journal the book i recommend 
to note the shift of Kundalini across the planet is Dranvalo Melchizedek, The Serpent of Light. Very good book, if, but highly esoteric if you want to read it. Sir John Woodruff, like I said, The Serpent Power. And this is one of my all-time favorites. The Mantra. If you are so inclined to study Sanskrit and the mantras, there are the thousand names of the goddess Kundalini. One thousand names. There is a chanting. It's called the Lalita Sahasranama. It's one of the most popular ones in Vedic literature. People chant it all the time here in India. It's the most amazing, even as I speak of this, I'm getting the chills. Most amazing chills you might get in your spine as if you're so inclined to think in terms of mantras giving you the chills, right? And there are certain nakshatras and certain people, certain types of arrangements who resonate more with sound, okay? The science of sound is mantras. So I'll get to that all later in the later videos of this. So there you go. I'll let leave you with this. I have gone long enough. It's 21 minutes. Take care, be safe and leave your comments if you want me to explore something more and dig something more on this. But have a look at these resources. Explore this. This is one huge chunk of the shift and it is going to, when I first came across this, I was like mind blown. I was like, wow, why is nobody talking more on this subject? It changes the whole game on this planet completely. The spirituality is altered forever now. It is no longer going to be India as the center of spirituality, but Latin America as the center of spirituality. Imagine that. Amazing, isn't it? Okay, I'll leave you with that. Take care, be safe. Have a good day.